Hello friends, welcome to our special session on career counseling called Pratibha Samvardhan and today we are uh, talking on study in US. How one can uh, go about, how uh, one can apply in US universities and for this we have with us in our studios Mr. Sumer Bruta. Mr. Sumer Bruta is an educational counsellor and through this medium of ours he is deliberately making efforts so that it is easier for you to understand how you can go about and how you can uh, opt for the university universities in US for studying. So we would like to welcome our guest Mr. Sumer Bruta once again. Hello Thank sir, you. welcome Thank to you so the much. lecture. So as you were discussing in the previous session that um, you know, how one can apply through different portals and apps the different universities in US. Now I would like to know can one apply uh, simultaneously all together in different universities? Yes, you can apply simultaneously in different universities in fact but you have to be very mindful of uh, the early rounds as such. So, if you are applying to early action, uh, as I was telling you that it can be that you know you may not be able to apply to other private universities. In early decision, you may be only able to sign a uh, contract with one university itself, but not more than anything as such that. But if you are applying without any restrictions, so the first portal which is the most famous portal to apply to the US which is called the Common App, you can apply to a maximum of 20 universities on the Common App. Whereas Co coalition app, the same thing, the same number will also be there as such. University of California portal, you can't apply to maximum of uh, more than nine universities as such. So there is no cap in terms of everything. But as a student, it gets very difficult overall to manage so many applications because different universities can have different essays. So a uh, essay can be of 250 words. It can be of 300 words, it can be of 500 words, it can be of 650 words, maybe a thousand words as such. So writing so many essays can be very difficult to handle at that point of time. So there is no cap overall other than these variations as such, but that is how it goes. Definitely. So one has to follow that criteria and every university has their uh, own criteria as you yourself told in the previous session that uh, they have certain frameworks and on the basis of that they select the student. Yes. So uh, uh, we would be talking more on uh, how to get into the universities. Uh, sometimes uh, it may happen the student if willing for one university may not able to get in uh, the, uh, the admission in the preferred university may get admission in the another university. So this may also happen because it's a kind of yes. a probability I have assumed yes, right now. Yes, absolutely. So see, what happens is that uh, whenever you apply to the US and when you start making that college list for US universities, it is very important to understand which universities are very difficult to get into. Like for example, the Ivy Leagues or the top universities of California or certain tech universities or something. So it's always better to keep certain target options, target options meaning certain universities which may be 50-50 to get into and certain safety universities where you know uh, the acceptance rate is about you know 80% or something on those lines. So it's very easy to you know encapsulate on those particular uh, aspects. But the most important thing is that do not only apply to universities which are very highly selective because if they are very selective there is a chance that you may not have a plan B which can be tricky for your application also. So this is how. Uh, like you told about the Harvard which asks you, you cannot apply in other university apart from the uh, uh, public university. So are there other universities also which have same criteria like this? Yes, absolutely. So if you are applying to early action and if the university ha it has a single choice early action, then it is quite possible. So uh, a few examples that come to my mind would be probably you can apply to Princeton University, they have a single choice early action. Yale University has a single choice early action. MIT being a private university does not have a single choice, but it is early action. So you can apply to other universities also. But for other institutions, this is how specifically, you know, this is. University of Chicago, it's ranked 10th worldwide. Again, the same story that you can't apply to other private universities, but you can apply to public institutions overall. Uh it may also uh, be happening with someone somewhere that um, if the person has applied for a number of the universities and altogether uh, his or her name came in a uh, few of the universities of the choice. Now it is the independent decision of one to take admission any of them? Yes, it is independent. But if you have applied for early decision, then it is going to be mandatory that you only attend that university where you have, uh, you know, signed that contract that you will, uh, you know, come to that institution overall. But 
keeping everything else in mind the the student should always consider you know certain aspects like do they want to apply to a small college versus a large college is it that you know they want a research orientation versus uh, they want you know something more academically oriented as such so all of these kind of aspects will play a very strong role in further you shortlisting your applications so this is how it happens and uh, what do i want that is also one of the most important yes, things absolutely. you will get the admission in particular university or not it will be the yes, result which are going yes, to tell you yes. but uh, if i have research in advance what i want to do and from where i want to do and uh, in case m- the in the draw uh, i am picked yes, up yes. then it is easier for me it to identify easier. also it is it is much easier if you're going to a university but always research you know so always try and find what are students talking about you know on youtube on linkedin and all of those kind of social network uh, uh, networking websites wherein you know you get an understanding of how that particular university is and it's very important also that ev- the first leg is of course that you get through the university but of course the second aspect that also comes into play will be that would you be able to sustain in that university mm-hmm. are the people to your liking are the professors to your liking is it what you wanted exactly so these kind of things are very important because when you're spending so much of money in the us it's very important that you you know not wasting that money also comparatively sometimes we have dilemmas uh, after what we get uh, are there any chances of switching the university for example i got admission one of the universities and now uh, i'm reluctant to join that university because i have an idea or, or i got admission in another university or lagta hai ki nahi let's switch it so wo provision hai hamare paas yes yes so us education system has something which is called a flexible or a liberal education system wherein what happens is that instead of completing your degree in 3 years a standard undergraduate degree is for 4 years now within those 4 years specifically the first two years are typically very general so you study everything in a very general format maybe you're studying math you're studying history maybe you're studying sociology psychology all of those kind of things then the concentration that you want to do the final two years you select on that particularly so maybe if you're not liking the course you can of course change the course because us allows that flexibility right but if you're not liking the university you can of course take a transfer so that is possible in the first 2 years of your you know being in that particular university that you can apply for a transfer to another institution but that would also depend on your gpa in the first year if your you you know grade point average is dropping or something on those lines so then it can be difficult in terms of getting into other institutions as well so this is how does happens. it follow for uh, switching a stream also mai agar university ke alawa mujhe lagta hai ki nahi the university is good but i want to switch to another course and to the another university also within the university courses can be changed and uh, apart from the same university humko university bhi change karne kyunki wo course wahan available nahi hai dusri university mein on that parameters also can uh, we can switch absolutely absolutely you can but then you would have to take a transfer in the first 2 years because mm-hmm. you're still studying everything in general and you have not declared your major by that point of time so for that reasoning it is important that if you're taking it in the first 2 years it will be easier for you to specifically change your stream and change your major to give you an example it's uh, being a humanity student you can also major in something called physics if you've not even started physics because the, in the us there are degrees like ba physics as such or you could do ba computer science also so the roster of courses in the us you know anybody can pick up anything in that regard also so this is how it happens and it would be uh, i mean it would be easier for me to understand the university curriculum the different university curriculum the courses only if i have researched about the yes, university yes, yeah? yes as you told about the various apps uh, uh, and the portals uh, is it easier for one to go through those portals and find up out of, about the particular university kya hum no so, actually so, it would be a little difficult doing that but rather the easier part that you can specifically take up here will be that you can uh, go on collegeboard.org so there is a college search tool in on that where you can research about you know different uh, universities there is another website which is called usnews.com so us news and uh, college board these are excellent resources to basically understand that how d- is a particular university doing uh, what kind of a university is it acceptance all of those kind of things as well 
as you yourself told there are thousands of universities so searching each and every uh, simultaneously ek sath karna to it would be difficult little so is there any criteria that for example i am from the science background i want to move ahead in the sciences so searching ke liye aisa koi hamare paas mechanism hai through these portals yeah, yeah, absolutely so you can also research in terms of uh, asking questions i mean to the uh, of course you know on google that uh, you can specifically ask them questions related to this particular aspect that which are the best tech universities in the us which are the best science universities which are the best universities for psychology in the us and then accordingly start factoring in that will it be a good university for you or not as such now the second step once i get the admission in a particular university then what is the next step ahead so when you take a admission into a particular university you have to register for your courses so first year courses you would have to register whatever your university is requiring you to take so specifically in other countries what happens is or even in india as a matter of fact that once when you studied you do not have to register for courses specifically here you would have to schedule your classes take up classes and that is how you would have to move forward in terms of the us but one important aspect that you would have to also understand is that if in case you planning to go to the us you should also apply for scholarships so scholarships are an important aspect of doing this so you know there is something which is called a financial aid in the us wherein the person who is applying for the university application can you know get certain financial benefits in terms of scholarships in certain aspects it may be 100% of scholarship in certain aspects it may be 75 50 25 or maybe just 5000 dollars or something so financial aid can be something that you can look at very strongly but financial aid uh is only available in private universities public universities do not offer financial aid legally to indian students or any international student but within financial aid also there are two variations so for example within financial aid the first aspect that you can look at is need aware need aware is available in most of the private universities whichever are offering scholarships to international students but there is a disadvantage, uh, disadvantage whenever you are applying for this particular scholarship because you can be it can be factored into your admission decision right because say for example if i and ma'am are applying to the same university with similar profiles overall so uh, she has asked for a scholarship i haven't so i will be given more preference because it's a private university comparatively but there is another family of universities which is called need blind wherein it is not factored into your admission decision for example but overall in the us right now there are seven universities which are need blind harvard yale princeton mit dartmouth uh, bowdoin college amherst college so these seven colleges you can apply to and they will not hold you responsible or they will not give you a disadvantage if you are applying for a scholarship specifically so that is the difference between need blind and need aware there is another vary uh, variation which is merit based scholarships these are not financial so wherein financial aid you would have to give them proof of your income or your parents income and things on those lines in merit based aid your finances have nothing to do with it so within merit based aid scholarships you can specifically apply to public universities for this So, for example, University of Massachusetts at Amherst gives sixteen thousand dollars scholarship per annum to students who are doing well academically and non-academically. Michigan State University gives roughly around twenty-one thousand Australian dollars per annum. New York University uh, has a campus in Abu Dhabi in Dubai, where you can specifically uh, find full ride scholarships, wherein you don't even have to do. uh you know spend on that specific on your living costs also the university will cover it so that is how it specifically goes so scholarship could also one of the criteria while choosing a university of course of course it can be a criteria in terms of your acceptance into the university also definitely definitely it means it's a two way uh, yes. uh, street exactly yes. exactly now apart from the scholarship uh, what are the other provisions for example the education loan loan like in india we have this provision of taking the education loan where the father takes a loan and uh, the son or daughter say will pay the debts later so are there any provisions for uh, provision for there all so can take education loan here in india is it possible yes i mean you can definitely take education loans in india but uh, my advice to students has always been that take uh, an education loan from a public bank rather than a private bank because in a public bank the rate of interest is comparatively lower 
right and it is fair also but in private banks usually the rate of interest can be very high in most of the cases whenever you are applying for an education loan they will try and look at whatever assets you have whatever income proof you can basically show to the bank your civil score all of those kind of things will be factored in and most of the cases it's not that you can you know they'll finance you 100% so you need to have certain savings as well overall for your uh, you know undergraduate degree as well in the us or your postgraduate degree so we have this provision also so those students who are watching us uh, live right now they are getting the idea that uh, yes they can move ahead they can go us for the higher studies uh, one more question uh, because uh, whenever the student goes abroad they have this uh, thing in mind that they have to um, earn while they learn so what are the provisions for earning there while we are studying at a particular so university luckily in the us uh, there is a 20 hour part time work provision uh wherein you can you know specifically as an international student work for 20 hours part time per week so there are two areas where you can largely look for jobs one is wherein you can work on campus which is on the university campus so you may be working in the library or maybe you're working with a professor with their research paper or maybe you're doing some other work with canteen or something like that off the campus you can work in a variety of areas so for example uh you can work with you know prime time tech companies as an intern and they pay you you know on that particular so the average uh, you know kickback that a student gets is roughly between 7 to 11 dollars per hour in terms of studying so but that depends on whatever opportunities you can capitalize on because these four years whenever you're studying an undergraduate degree or for those two years wherever you're doing a masters degree you have to actively branch out and network with a lot of companies as well in order to you know acquire suitable uh, connections so for example around the world on saturdays there is a, a, a an event that happens which is called startup saturdays so wherein a lot of these you know businesses new age businesses startups they will come they will you know talk about their companies and things like that and that is where you can actually network with them overall so this is how it happens now if somebody want if somebody has pursued a certain course in a particular university and one wants to learn more one wants to earn more degrees so what is the provision how uh, one can get into that has uh, one need to start again or uh, uh, it is easier then so specifically what happens is that after you've completed an undergraduate degree for about 4 years so you can specifically move forward in terms of doing a masters degree so if you're an international student who's going for a masters degree it's beneficial if it is a stem based degree because on the basis of that you get a post study work permit in the us but comparatively uh, so one does a uh, undergraduate degree then a masters degree and then a phd degree uh, that is how typically it goes so four years plus two years or and then you know another five years but a phd degree specifically is only for those people who do want to work in the academia you know aspect of uh, his or her career but if you are wanting to pursue a professional program then typically a masters program is something that we can look at overall once you have taken uh, i mean a degree from a particular uh, university mm-hmm. uh, in us and now you are planning to settle there only what is the criteria how do you get the work permit there because most of uh, the students who go abroad they wish to settle there right. only and specifically if you talk about usa right. uh, people have this tendency and this uh, i mean uh, the desire to settle there yeah. so us settling down is uh, very difficult also because what happens is that if you're doing a stem program in the us you are allowed to work over there for about 24 months or 36 months depending on whatever visa is being granted to you so first you do an internship which is called cpt which is curriculum practical training then that gets converted into optional practical training so for those 3 years or 2 years whenever you're working then you would have to separately apply for h1b which is a work visa so work visa can take time and so far in the us it has been a lottery system since the change in you know the leadership as such so after that you can sustain over there but acquiring a green card or a permanent residency can be difficult in the us whether you're doing a stem degree or not but if you want to stay in the us then it is very important that your degree is stem recognized overall so this is how it goes uh what is this stem recognized could you please tell our students because so also- stem is science technology engineering mathematics so any degree that comes into this particular domain will be uh, counted as stem however you still have to check with the university that is your department stem 
डेजिग्नेटेड और नॉट सो अकॉर्डिंग टू दी आई सी थ्री ओवरऑल विच इज द इमिग्रेशन डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ द यू एस यू वुड हैव टू स्पेसिफिकली आई मीन वर्क इन दैट पर्टिकुलर रिगार्ड सो इफ इफ यू डूइंग से फॉर एग्जाम्पल अ प्रोग्राम लाइक साइकोलॉजी सो साइकोलॉजी कैन बी बोर्ड स्टेम डेजिग्नेटेड नॉट स्टेम डेजिग्नेटेड इट कैन बी प्रॉब्ली सोशोलॉजी अगेन स्टेम डेजिग्नेटेड नॉट स्टेम डेजिग्नेटेड सो इफ इट इज स्टेम डेजिग्नेटेड देन यू गेट अ कंटिन्यूड यू नो पीरियड ऑफ पोस्ट स्टडी वर्क परमिट and now the another question is for both the uh, the students who are just going to pass from the school or uh, a student who has done a course over here and now he wants to opt for the uh, advanced course in the uh, us so are the admission criteria for both these candidates different or they have to go through the same procedure no there are different because of course if an undergraduate student is applying the exam that they would have to give would be either the sat or the act whereas if a student wanting to apply for the postgraduate degree would have to give a uh, the gre exam or the gmat exam so these are uh, the two exams typically that are required to apply to the us as a postgraduate student uh, your performance in that particularly would be uh, would matter at an undergraduate level the parameters are different but in a postgraduate level the parameters can be a little more different overall also so for example they would only judge you on the basis of your college mark sheets they will judge you in terms of you know how many internships have you taken up during your college time how many research papers have you published of course that may depend from one program to the other but loosely that is how you know they typically look at it they also look at you know uh, so for example an undergraduate student would have to supply their class 9th to 12th mark sheets their sat or act report you would have to also write an exam called the ielts exam or the toefl exam which is an english language proficiency exam you would have to provide references which are letters of recommendations your college essays your extraneous documents you know anything else that the universities can ask for but typically in terms of a post graduate application your college mark sheets your 12th mark sheets would may also be required your references your gmat your gre score report your toefl your ielts score report your cv or your resume all of these things specifically are looked at whenever you are applying to different universities in the us another differentiation is wherein if you're giving the sat as a high school student and if you want to apply to a very top notch university it should be 1500 and above if you're giving the act as an undergraduate student it should be roughly around 30 out of 30, uh, 32 out of 36 uh if you're applying to say for example as a post graduate student so your a strong gmat score will be somewhere around 700 and above out of 800 for gre it can be 325 and above out of 340 so that is how the variations are for top notch universities in the us uh now an, uh, another question is because we plan for some something or when we dream for something uh, we just not dream we plan for it actually so since when one should start uh, i mean working for uh, getting the uh, admission i mean admission criteria admission date is the it is when it is going to be but since when one need to prepare herself himself so if you are a class 9 student that is when or maybe if you are a first year student in college you should start preparing from then because that is when it actually matters you should plan out your extra curricular activities you should plan out what kind of activities you should be doing academically also like planning your aps planning your you know uh, tests like the american math contest or the canadian math contest and things on those particular lines so these things would matter a lot comparatively uh, but academic uh, uh, non academically it will you know of course be through internships social work research papers summer programs that you can do both in india or abroad you know you could do online courses online courses are a fantastic way to first give, get further understanding of the subject that you would want to study so for example if i am a businessman i may want to and uh, if i am a student wanting to study business i may would want to study something like digital marketing you know so existing things overall internships are a fantastic way for un- you to understand that the career that you're specifically taking up is it the right career for you or not because you get to know things practically rather than theoretically do social work so attach yourself in non-profit organizations or do something on your own which helps the community that is what universities also look at but more than what universities are looking at it should some- be something that is coming from within you because that is you know an important aspect of human values as well research papers most of the universities in the us that you know you apply to research is very strongly inclined 
uh, towards. So, if you're planning on giving, you know, writing research papers, try and get them published so that, you know, universities understand on those particular lines as well. Give as many international competitions that you can give over a period of time. So, that establishes your intent and your ability to apply the knowledge that you have garnered so far. So, this is how it specifically is. Last but not the least, uh, we have uh, three sets of students, extraordinary, average and below average, but everybody uh, has desire, everybody, uh, I mean, sees dream uh, that they want to get somewhere. For example, if they want to study in uh, US. Now, uh, preparing themselves at their level and then crafting the profiles, as you said, that one need to uh, create their profile, one need to craft their profile. So, at what level three of them require to do? So, typically with regard to the uh, academic level, that depends on the universities that you wish to apply for. If you are applying to the most competitive universities in the US, then a below average student or maybe an average student first needs to, you know, get high marks overall in, you know, their academic uh, uh, settings. So, 9, 10th, 11th, 12th overall. But comparatively, other than that, in terms of the extracurricular activities also, if you are giving a very heavy hitting profile, you know, wherein you maybe have done so many research papers, wherein you have done so many uh, extracurricular activities which are pointing towards the same thing and also showing diversity in your profile. That is what would matter. But if you're coming from a, uh, a very extraordinary profile and if you have all the right marks but your extracurriculars are not up to the mark, it can be, you know, very difficult getting into the universities of your choice. Versus a below average student doing very well extracurricular wise and you know the academics are not that great comparatively then again the same problem will be there so these universities would want to look at balance in terms of you know all of these things things so mrs summer bruta we would like to thank you for giving in-depth knowledge to all those students who uh, are watching us live or who would be watching us through our youtube channel dear friends we are going to upload this lecture on youtube for you so that you can access the lecture the number of times you wanted and afterwards if you feel so that you have certain question do write to us at ccgurukul.live at gmail.com we would love to give answers to your questions through Mr. Bruta via mail or the next time when he visits our studio. As well as uh, we would like to tell you all that we are going to meet next Thursday and would be discussing on another topic related to your careers. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, ma'am. Lovely having you. Thank you. Bye.